Hi there. When you're studying the challenges, the issues of a business growing, you may be able to use Griner's model of growth as a relevant theory to help explain the strategy and the choices made by management. So let's have a look, a quick look at uh, the key features of this model. The model uh, is quite complicated compared with other strategy models, but don't worry because you don't need to be an expert in it. I think the key thing is to remember the five key parts of it, the five crises, and then also be able to apply it to a relevant business situation. So let's firstly go through the phases of growth that Griner identified and the crises that arise, and then just explain them uh, one at a time. Firstly, the uh, the six phases. Griner suggested that uh, a business typically goes through six phases of growth, starting at creativity, through direction, leading to delegation, coordination, collaboration, and lastly, alliances. The key thing about the crises, the concept of the model, if you like, is that uh, the five crises occur as the business transitions between these phases. So, for example, as the business moves from the creativity phase at the start through to the direction phase, what is it that leads the business to move from phase one to phase two, from creativity to direction? What was the crises that leads to that development? So let's have a look at them. The first is a crisis of leadership. This is where the business, having been driven by the creativity of the founder, starts to experience the problems of uh, informal communication. The business starts to get a little bit too big for the leader for him or her to get involved in everything. And the need for direction is, uh, is evidenced by this crisis. The need for the first uh, formation of a proper management structure, organisational structure, perhaps bringing in some specialist people, a finance person or a marketing person. So that's the first crisis, the crisis of leadership. That gives the business more direction, but eventually it then comes to another crisis, according to the model, called autonomy, the crisis of autonomy. Now, the business has functional management, but perhaps the founder or the leader is struggling to let go. And as these professional managers come into the business, they start to ask for more control more autonomy over what they do. For example, the marketing manager may request a marketing budget and some control over how it's spent. That crisis leads the business to enter a new phase of delegation. The response is giving the, the managers in the business more delegation, more delegated responsibility. And that works fine until the business grows to a stage where the third crisis arises, which is the crisis of control. And here, in response uh, to the more formal management structures that are in place, the business has started to find it's adding in more layers to the hierarchy. It's starting to, uh, to recruit uh, and add middle management into the business. So really what's happening here is, as there is more delegation, um, there are more layers added to the hierarchy. The organisational structure starts to get taller. And the effect of this is that the senior management team may not necessarily be as well versed in what's going on in the business. They start to lose touch with what's happening throughout the business. Another crisis, a crisis of control. OK, so the response to that is to add in more features of the organisational structure, in particular, a greater emphasis on communication and reporting, perhaps more extensive budgeting, more meetings. Uh, what happens here is there's a danger of a growth in organisational bureaucracy, otherwise known as red tape. And so this is the fourth crisis that Griner suggested a growing business goes through. Red tape, bureaucracy, uh, typically associated with slow decision making and perhaps a business or, or management teams who become uh, less aware of how the external environment is changing around them. And another characteristic of businesses suffering from red tape is higher costs. Far too many layers in the hierarchy, a, a, a management structure that is overweight, if you like. Too many managers for the business. And so the response to that is typically to start taking out layers of the hierarchy, the same layers we added in as the business was growing. The fifth crisis 
is the crisis of growth. Uh, this is where the business has started to run out of ideas. And it uh, typically then starts to look for alternative methods of growth. The classic example would be a takeover or merger, external growth. Or perhaps it may start to seek alliances as a response to the crisis of growth. You also typically see these kind of businesses start to de-layer further to recognise that the, uh, the crisis of red tape has not yet been addressed and actually the best way to start to make the business more competitive is to take layers of the management hierarchy out. We're seeing that a lot in the UK supermarket uh, sector at the minute. Many layers of the hierarchy being removed in a, in, in a bid to, uh, to reduce costs and hopefully stimulate growth. So there we go, that's it. That's the Griner's model for six phases of growth. But the key thing to remember are these five crises. Leadership, autonomy, control, red tape, and finally, growth. What can we learn from the model? Well, I guess something we probably already knew, which is that growing a business is, uh, isn't easy. It's difficult. And by definition, as a business gets bigger, as a business gets more complicated, as it adds more layers to the hierarchy, as it operates in different locations, that creates all kinds of crises and challenges for management. The key learning for the business is that therefore leadership and organisational structure need to evolve, need to change as the business changes. And perhaps businesses that don't recognise the need for, for change uh, will, uh, will not perform as well as those that do. There are some criticisms of the model. I guess like most models we look at in A-level business, it's pretty simplistic. But it serves a purpose in terms of trying to predict and explain why businesses go through problems. Of course, it's certainly the case. Not every business will suffer the crises that Griner predicts. Neither will they necessarily go through the phases of growth in the way that the model predicts. And I think a, a, a valid criticism is that as business growth changes in the current environment, the model doesn't really take account of how quickly business is changing, in particular the external environment. But nevertheless, it's an interesting model and one that A-level AQA students need to have an awareness of, and it's Griner's model of growth.